Welcome back dear students. Now uh, let us continue with the session on educational psychology. We were looking into the various psychologists and their theories from time to time. And uh, now let us uh, continue with the, the rest of them. So humanism, what does it mean by humanism? Like uh, we all know that it is a humanistic approach in uh, educational psychology. It emphasizes the importance of the inner world of the learner and the place of individuals. Thought, feelings and emotions at the forefront of all human development. So epigenetic, epigenetic principle, it is uh, Predetermined um, maturational stages includes uh, which uh, Eric uh, Homberger Erickson uh, mentioned in his theory, you know. It, it is the uh, growth uh, cycle of uh, human, uh, human life. Every individual proceeds through eight stages from birth to old age, each of which possess a particular crisis. Yes, Erickson's theory suggests that your ego identity develops throughout your entire life during eight specific stages the first stage is infancy yes it's the first stage of human life the first stage is infancy during this stage development centers around trust and mistrust yes of course when baby cries or fuzzes and you meet their needs by holding feeding and caring for them you build trust over time your baby learns that they can trust other uh, caregivers too the second stage is toddlerhood. During this stage, which begins at 18 months old and lasts until age 2 or 3, your toddler development focuses on autonomy uh, versus uh, like a shame or doubt. Then, stage 3, it is preschooling stage. Stage 4 is early school years. This we all know. Here, development centers around industry and inferiority. This stage begins at age 6 and lasts till age 11. Then, if a teacher or caregiver and peers offer support and a sense of accomplishment, they feel competent and productive. If they don't receive positive reinforcement for their accomplishments, they may feel inferior or incompetent. Yes, this is the thing concerned with stage 4. This is uh, next stage is uh, stage 5, adolescence age. At this age, development centers around identity and role confusion. Yes, they'll, they'll be uh, sticking on to certain things, whether uh, they'll not, they'll be left in a confusion, which role to follow. This stage begins at around age 12 and lasts till age 18. During adolescence, you are trying to figure out who you are and establish goals and priorities for your adult life. The stage 6 is your ad young adulthood. At this stage, intimacy and isolation are the focus of development. <coughs> Yes, the stage 7 is middle adulthood. Uh, the adult uh, development in this stage is around generativity, stagnation of self-absorption. The, la uh, the last stage is late adulthood. The final stage of the development process proposed by Erickson centers around ego integrity and despair. Yes, of course. So, <clears throat> these were all the uh, seven stages, the eight stages he tells us. So, what does mean by uh, the crises and challenges that they come across? If it is handled well with the help of other significant people, individuals will smoothly move on to the next stage. If it is inadequately dealt with, individuals will find it more difficult to deal with. So, Erickson's uh, psychosocial development chart is put up like this. Stage 1. Stage one, like a psycho, uh, where they have a psycho, like uh, psychosocial crisis, like trust versus mistrust. Then uh, there are uh, significant relations attached to it. Then psychosocial modalities and its virtues, and mod adaptations and malignancies. So Erickson's theory is important for educators to realize that learning and education is a lifelong process. Real life learning requires help from others. Learning is a cumulative process. Education involves the whole person. Yes, yes, of course. So, in continuation of the theory, uh, we are we are about to see 
the next important theory in psychology you know it is abraham harold maslow's hierarchy of needs this we would you all have heard of it uh, in various occurrences you know individuals are driven to meet uh, basic needs <clears throat> so what are they maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs theory is regarded as one of the most popular theories on motivation it is a theory of psychology that explains that humans are highly motivated in order to fulfill their needs which is based on hierarchical order yes of course uh, human life is surrounded with uh, various needs you know and he, he has given an order according to it it was first introduced by abraham maslow in 1943 <clears throat> for his paper uh, titled theory of motivation yes it is introduced by abraham maslow in the year 1943 for his paper titled theory of motivation and is based on a hierarchy of needs which starts with the most basic needs and then it moves to the higher levels so based on that the first need is psycho physiological needs which is like food shelter warmth health and water etc the second is safety need once the basic needs are fulfilled like food water and uh, uh, the, there is an innate desire to move to the next level so as we have uh, seen it earlier maslow's hierarchy of human needs it, uh, it the children may be having difficulties with the learning because their basic needs are being first met it is important to establish a secure environment where learners can build up self respect by receiving respect from others learners must be encouraged to think cognitive needs uh, and not be penalized for being creative that is their aesthetic needs classroom tasks should be challenging and encouraging helping learners recognize their full potential <coughs> so uh, carl ramson rogers humanist uh, he, he gives us uh, the humanist principles of learning uh, roger believed that uh, his theory of uh, personality development was based on humanistic psychology according to uh, his uh, approach everyone exists in a world full of experiences yes of course these experiences shape our uh, reactions that include uh, external objects and people also uh, this is known as their phenomenal field you know rogers believed that a person's behavior is a factor motivated by self actualization tendencies to work and achieve the highest level of uh, their potential and achievement during this process a person's form of structure of self or self concept a positive self concept is associated with feeling good and safe if they have a negative self concept they may feel unhappy with who they are so uh, rogers uh, divided the self into two categories one is the ideal and the real self Roger abstracted a number of principles about learning like natural potential personal relevance perception change and adaptation minimum external threats active learning responsibility self initiated learning <clears throat> self criticism self evaluation learning of the process of the learning so he talks about uh, various things like un unconditional positive regard which he, uh, he discusses here as a classroom atmosphere that is uh, he, he talks about the importance of unconditional positive regard to fully actualize people are raised in conditions of unconditional positive regard where no conditions of worth are present classroom atmosphere which emphasizes respect uh, students are clients which uh, specific needs are to be met with positive regard is unconditional it does not depend on client's behavior the clients are regarded as person not as a collect collection of behavior teacher essentially conveys warmth and empathy to build a relationship of trust so from roger's perspective learning experiences are seen to be lim of limited educational value unless uh it is they have impact upon human condition the fully functioning person you know they have five characteristics which which he discusses as they are open to experiences positive and negative feelings uh, which are worked through with existential living is in touch with more, more experiences in life as they occur living in the moment and appreciating the present also trust feelings of gut reactions uh, people's own decisions are the right ones and we should trust ourselves to make the right choices 
a person doesn't stay safe all the time they seek new experiences and, and so risk taking is a part of life a person who is living a fulfilled life that is happy and satisfied and always looking for new challenges and experiences this is how he characterizes it so what the implications of the humanistic approach are like uh, the first thing is differentiations uh, yes educators have to help learners to develop personal identity and relate to it <clears throat> then self actualization humanism in elt like uh, language techno teaching methodologies like uh, they suggest a humanist response of alienation based firmly on psychology than in linguistics social uh, interactionism uh, they emphasize the importance of culture and context in understanding the society and constructing knowledge based on the end of their understanding reality is constructed through human activity knowledge is human product which is socially and culturally constructed learning is a social process yes it is a never ending process uh social interactionist they view uh, piaget tn uh, theory as children learn independently by exploring the environment behaviorist uh, view it as adults are responsible for shaping children's uh, uh, learning by the use of punishments and rewards so social interaction interactionist they view it in the form of children are born into a social world learning occurs through interaction with other people uh, so livy uh, uh lev uh, vyagotsky was a, a russian psychologist and teacher who developed a theory about how our social interactions influence our cognitive development this is known as lev uh, vyagotsky's socio cultural theory of cognitive development he developed his theories around the same time as a swiss psychologist uh, gn pegget was developing theories about cognitive development so what uh, what is specific about uh, vygotsky's theory is uh, his uh, theory asserts that a child's cognitive development and learning ability can be guided and mediated by their social interactions his theory it is also called as uh, vygotsky's socio cultural theory states that learning is a uh, learning uh, is a crucially social process and uh, as opposed to an independent journey of discovery he expands on this by stating that a child's learning uh, benefited greatly from being guided by a more knowledgeable member of the community such as a parent or teacher vygotsky's social cultural theory also suggested that uh, uh, children internalize and learn from the beliefs and attitudes they witness around them of course children learns much from the outside world uh, from their daily happenings you know Uh, he believed that cultural uh, culture also played an important role in shaping cognitive development and therefore this development is varied across cultures it differs from people, place to place you know the more knowledgeable other could be anyone with a greater understanding of the task or concept that the child is trying to complete or learn so you must be able to uh, walk uh, hand in hand with the child Uh, the first thing he has stated here is interaction the importance of language in interacting with people then uh, what is to be learned uh, cannot be broken down into small sub continents you must be holistic uh, so meaning meaning should be the central aspect of any unit of study concept of mediation is mk what is more knowledgeable other so this is how it goes like uh, his two developmental levels then so the next psychologist is reuven fiorestin and uh, he says that anyone can become fully effective learner he defines his theory as structural cognitive uh, morphability which is uh, structures uh, can be mo- it's all modifiable it's a dynamic assessment he says like a way of assessing the true potential of children by involving two way interaction mediator is a key factor in effective learning mediation involves interaction between mediator and learner the methodology of the froistian approach consists of four pillars you know the dynamic assessment cognitive activation then uh, mediator learning and shaping a modified behavior uh, in an environment like structural cognitive improvement could be demonstrated in positive change scores even that's what he says 
see this is a given example over here i'll tell you everything you need to know you need to memorize the information you will be required to produce the information i'll listen and copy your notes i'll memorize the information i'll reproduce the information so what you uh, incorporate into them will be the, the result uh, uh, given by the children so this is how they give like a teacher learner and a task it is a uh, circular motion yes thank you children for patient listening